Hey YouTube, I want to do a quick video on updates, dates, and issues I've had with this bike since I got it. Um, I guess I'll uh, start with the front. Um, front forks, I had to install a riser on here uh, because the handlebars were just too low for me personally. It, just, it was hurting my hands to lean forward so far. Uh, and my wrists, my palms would just get sore. So I got a riser to help alleviate some of that. Um, as such, I had to lower the seat, and by lowering the seat, I'm closer to the pedals, which makes this thing harder to pedal. So, not exactly the best bicycle in the world, but um, not a bad motorized bike. Um, but when I when I changed out the uh, when I, when I installed the, the riser um, for the gooseneck, um, the forks slipped down and one of the bearings fell out and actually got bent. It's a you know a bearing ring with a bunch of little bearings in it. And I managed to find the bearings that fell out and put them back in and cleaned it up and set it back in here. But I had to be real careful when I was pressing this back together because it doesn't screw together really. You have to press it down and then push your 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 uh, handlebar, push your handlebars down or your riser bar down and um, tighten it. So I managed to get it pretty tight so it isn't loose, but. Um, it's something to look out for if you're working on these, the forks on this thing. Um, the brakes were pretty squeaky when I first got it. I sanded the brake pads um, down a bit and cleaned up the disc with uh, some parts cleaner. And um, also when you adjust it, you want to adjust it so when you squeeze the brakes, um, it doesn't push the disc left or right. You know, it just kind of, you know, basically there's a... There's a Allen head here you got to screw in, and you can just adjust it so that way it's perfect. The disc is perfectly centered between the pads. Uh, as far as these, this is the original stock tire that came with it. It's starting to go smooth. Um, after a few weeks of use, uh, the rear tire was gone in like a week or two. So I had originally replaced it with a Schwab tire, um, which was great. You know, those have really good tread wear. Uh, but I somehow managed to run a drywall screw through the sidewall of it, and I don't want to pay another 50 bucks for another tire. So uh, someone on Facebook suggested I go to Walmart and get some Goodyear tires. So that's what I have on here now. Um, Treadwear seems okay. I've ridden it pretty far. and it doesn't look too bad, but I need to ride it some more. I don't think it'll be as good as Schwab, but I'm certain it'll be better than the tires that came with it. Um... Motor stuff. Uh, replace the carburetor with an NT second generation carburetor. Um, I think that gives me a little more power. Certainly feels a little smoother, smoother, but I don't know if it's that or the fact I replaced the spark plug too with the NGK. Was it B6HS or something like that? Yeah. And uh, also replace the standard muffler with this muffler. Um, I needed some better low end torque so I could get up hills so I thought maybe putting this on would help and I thought I would go ahead and upgrade the carburetor while I was at it. Um, I had lost power a couple weeks, two, three weeks into using this thing so um, while I was messing around I thought I would retorque the, the bolts on the head and discovered they were loose so that was probably the main reason I was losing power so I retorqued them and I think it was 15 pounds, um, got my power back. Um, but I definitely, definitely noticed an improvement going up hills, and the three major things that I did was I changed the spark plug, changed the carburetor, and the muffler. Um, on the stock muffler, let's see, what I had done on the stock muffler was I took this end off and took the screw out and pulled the end out, and there's like a, a baffle pipe that goes up so far. And there's some separators in here, and I think there's one at the bottom, and I think I cut that pipe right. When you pull this out and you've been driving it a while, you'll see marks on the pipe where those, where those separator plates are. And I cut just above the bottom plate here and put that back in, and I, that really improved my low-end power. Um, just, just in case someone wants to try that. There's other videos about that, but um, I thought I would give it a shot, and it seemed to work. I thought it would get a louder noise as a result, but I really didn't notice too much difference, so I went ahead and 
stuck with it, and then uh, but buying this pipe, I think, was better for low end, low end power. I installed a chain tensioner. Um, I bought this from Gas Bikes, I think, and I actually kept my old mounting bracket from my old tensioner because it was uh, it was shaped better to my frame. Uh, the one that came with the with the spring tensioner. It was too narrow and it was too hard to get the bolts through so I just I just kept the old one and um, so I installed that uh, one of the first things to go was this little nut and bolt right here um, that fell out I don't know when it fell out so I just I just recrimped the bottom hook here on the spring so it would hold this together and it just kind of it just sits there and it seems to be fine um, I had to put a number of washers uh, between the rocker arm and the bracket and also between the um, the wheel and the rocker arm uh, because it was it, would, it was just too tight so I noticed when I put washers in there it would loosen them up it would stay loose even though I was tightening it down and I wanted to be able to tighten it down really good but have it stay loose so uh, that worked out really well uh, and this this seems to work pretty good um, it seems to uh, handle a lot of the, the um, a lot of the tension in the chain um, while at the same time giving it enough slack so the frame can bend and stuff which is really what I wanted. I was thinking about getting one which goes here, but I didn't really trust how that went together, and I wasn't sure I could... I wanted to put a little more tension than usual on the chain. So, anyway, so far this has worked out pretty well. Um, you know, I've had to work it and stuff to make sure it's aligned. It's lined up with the motor sprocket and the wheel sprocket. Um, on the cranks, uh, these are starting to come loose. Um, they've already come loose twice. Um, but since I tightened them, it's, it's actually stayed tighter a lot longer, but I've, uh, I noticed the first time it came loose, I took this apart and looked inside and there was next to no lubrication. I think there was like a few drops of oil. And so I packed in some bearing grease in there and, uh, tightened it up. So, um, it's starting to come loose again. I got to tighten it up, but I think the bearings are just starting to seep to the metal is why. Um, this kickstand is already broke. It snapped off actually earlier today. I was trying to work on the clutch. I had a problem with the clutch. I'll explain in a minute. Um, but this broke, and I just took the top half and turned it upside down, and I found a longer bolt and ran it through because the, the shorter bolt doesn't work when this is broken. So if, I have, if I'm going to use this broken piece, I had to find a longer bolt, and it seems to work fine for now. So, But I definitely like this kickstand. Also, the feet have come off this thing. The rubber feet, they... They, they tend to come off after a while. Um, Kickstand gets a lot of abuse, so I guess those feet aren't really designed for that kind of abuse. I may have mentioned before that this first sprocket had come loose the first time I rode it. Uh, I rode about 25 miles and the, the Allen head bolt started to come out. Uh, one came out so far it hit the frame and bent. Uh, so I wound up replacing that one and then taking all of them and putting lock washers on there. I haven't used Loctite on pretty much anything except for the engine side of the studs. That's the only place I've used Loctite, and that's that's worked pretty well. Um, oh, I should also mention, as long as I'm over here, this motor mount. I, one of the main reasons I bought this bike was actually for the wheels, and it had a built-in gas tank. And I thought having the motor mount was a nice little extra too, but it's I wouldn't depend on it because this did crack. And I didn't, what was happening was the engine was vibrating at really high speed, and I couldn't figure out why. And then one day when I was just doing a little bit of inspection over here, oh, I was pushing on the motor, and the motor was moving, and I couldn't figure out why. And I looked, and I saw there was a crack in this motor mount. So uh, the universal kit that came with this bike, I, I went ahead and grabbed the extra long studs and replaced the, replaced the other studs with these and locked tight them on the engine side. And then there's a universal bracket, square bracket with some holes in it, as you can see. And I just took that and... Um, well, there's a little piece of rubber right there too. Might as well use the rubber as long as I can find it. And just use that to basically press the engine up against the motor mount. So even though the motor mount's cracked, um, it's not broken off. So it's kind of still workable, sort of, sort of, kind of. In any case, I got the, the engine pressed up against the frame using a part of a universal mount. And I got lock washers and double nuts on all the motor bolts, every single one. So, um, I haven't had a problem with those coming loose. Uh, one thing I will say is I probably want to, I've got a series of washers here. Um, you might see yeah, a lot of 
washers right there. Um, I might replace those with a shaft, a hollow tube of some kind. Because um, if you look at the bolts compared to the stud, it's not straight. And I think the metal is so soft that uh, when, you, when the bolts come down at an angle, they actually bend the threads. So I'm probably going to put a shaft on there and try to find a way to uh, straighten out uh, the alignment of the nut with, uh, with the stud somehow. But for right now, it's holding. It hasn't come loose or anything, so I'm, I'm not going to mess with it until I can finish the whole thing and you know get it mounted properly. Um, okay, so also this little thing, this bolt, the uh, rocker arm and the camshaft, um, kept grabbing my pant leg when I pedal. <laughs> I pedal my pant leg would come around and just grab that and it was just it was it yanking up yanking on my leg when I try to pedal so I put this this is just a piece of metal with a hole drilled in it and um, I set it over uh, the top of the, the camshaft and bolted it down and then bent it over so that way it, my pant leg will just slide off it um, but that I did that today because I actually had to work on the clutch I got up this morning and went to start the bike and the uh, clutch wouldn't engage um, or it, the engine wouldn't engage with the you know with the clutch I couldn't figure out why and so one thing I noticed is I leaned the bike up against a wall and I didn't shut off the fuel so fuel was going into the carburetor reservoir and leaking out and I think what happened this is a this is just as I don't think actually this may not be the case I think um I think I suspected this is what happened, but it wasn't. Um, but I, I, I think what I was thinking is that fuel had gotten into the crack here on the, between the, the clutch cover and the engine and uh, leaked on the pads because it just it just wouldn't. It was fine yesterday, and then today it wouldn't it wouldn't engage. So I took this all apart and I replaced all the clutch pads and um, put it all back together and. You know, I cleaned up the clutch plates and everything so that way it was clean. But I, I, it still wouldn't work. And I was messing with it and messing with it. And um, after a while, I noticed that this rocker arm has to, I have to push it in really. It was, it was sitting about here. And it was really crimping this spring. And I'm thinking, that's not right. Normally the spring's got a little bit of play in it, you know. Um, but uh, after thinking about it, I realized that the, the rocker arm had slipped on the cram on the on the camshaft, so uh, I had took a bit of work, but I managed to pull this rocker arm off and reset it back on the camshaft properly. And while I was doing that, that's when I, that's when I decided to make this piece of metal and drop it on there. So I tested this out earlier today, and it seems to work pretty good. Um, but that handled all my clutch problems. I just I could not get the clutch adjusted for some reason, and after fixing the uh, alignment of the rocker arm and the camshaft it was that, that's what the problem was this actually I guess over time um, the the grooves there's little grooves and stuff uh, on the on the camshaft that the rocker arm um, if, you, if you take it apart you can see it it's a set of grooves kind of like a, almost like a gearing system it's supposed to keep the rocker arm from slipping but I think over time it does slip um, I don't know if maybe this bolt came loose and it started to slip came up and started to slip or um, um, just heat, uh, constant use caused it to slip. I mean, it may be wearing out. You know, I may have to consider buying another one. Anyway, um, so I fixed that today and got that problem solved. The downside is, is I probably didn't have to replace the cl the, the clutch pads. I probably could have kept my old clutch pads. They were working just fine. I was, I was curious to see how long a set would last. Um, but. Anyway, so, but the set I had was working fine. Um, still had plenty of pad on them when I pulled them out and put new ones in. So, I guess I just got to start over on that little experiment. Um, but I, I was work because I use the clutch a lot. You know, when I start off from a dead stop, I, I do pedal, but I use the, I, cl I give it a little, I let out the clutch a little bit so I get some power. So I, my knees aren't that strong, you know. I'm, I'm an old guy, plus, um, uh, these, these, the, the pedal and seat arrangement makes it kind of hard to pedal this thing, so 
Um, I, I, I tend to let out the clutch to give myself a little extra help while I'm pedaling this thing to a start. And so I, I do work the, the clutch really well, uh, quite a bit. Uh, and examining the clutch pads today, it's, they were in fine shape. Lots of lots of pad on there, so um, I guess it's it's not a problem to do that. I guess the only the only other concern would be wear and tear on the engine because it does bog down on you know if I if I clutch it out a little bit too much. Um, but you know anyway, I guess I'll just learn as I go. Uh, see any other issues? Um, here's my neat little. Um, PVC mounting system. Uh, I just, just stuck it, stuck it, uh, made a PVC T, and then stuck it inside the pipe on this bike rack and drilled some holes and ran some bolts through. So it's um, pretty solid. It gives me a place to mount some lights. Um, this is on here with a Velcro strap because uh, I had a, a hose clamp mount, kind of like what I use up here uh, for this light. And, uh, I don't know. I think someone just came up and ripped it off because <laughs> it wasn't there when I went to put my light on one day. <laughs> so um, I'm going to try to think of a little bit more durable system that people won't be so tempted to mess with and vandalize. Um, I thought this is a handy idea. This is one of those dollar store cable locks. I thought I'd grab one of those just to keep people from walking off with my seat and my rack for that matter. found this light at uh, DD Discount over in uh, near El Monte, I think, and uh, I haven't tried it yet, but this light, it's my flasher, lets people see me, but it doesn't really work well when I'm trying to see the road at night, so I need a light that I can see the road at night, and I want to give this one a shot, it's a adjustable lens, so... And if that doesn't work, um, there's another light I'm going to build a mount for and just put it right here. Another goal I have is to try to figure out how to electrify this thing, but there's a couple of ideas I have. Um, I don't want to use a dynamo, a side wall dynamo. I hate those. They put a lot of drag on here. Motorized bike, it probably doesn't matter, but um, I still, I just don't like them. They're tacky. They have way too much drag for the amount of power they produce. Um, the best dynamo I've ever had was a, a front mount or top mount dynamo um, made by Sanyo and Panasonic. And it mounted right here where the kickstand goes, and it had a barrel wheel that sat right on top of the tire, and it had like next to no drag. And that was a wonderful uh, dynamo, and it got muddy and beat up, and still worked really well. So um, I found found one on eBay for like thirty-five dollars, but I don't want to invest in something that they don't make anymore. They just don't make those anymore. So um, I was gonna get a coil maybe to put inside the dynamo case but this is a dragon fire engine which means the CDI is built in to the dynamo case and there's no room for a coil of a pickup coil for power um, I was in an electronic shop and I picked up a, another coil and I'm gonna see I'm gonna just set it outside here near the dynamo because the dynamo spins about right here and I'm gonna set the coil up, up top run and just just set it here and measure it with a voltmeter to see if I get any kind of magnetic field that way because that would be a nice easy way to generate power for you know lighting the lights because as it is I gotta you know I'm, I'm powering this thing with nine AAA batteries and I gotta you know replace batteries all the time another thing I was looking at was I've got this little wheel kind of a ring actually and I was gonna mount some neodymium magnets to the ring and mount it to the wheel here and then put a coil on the fork and see if I can make a pickup coil on that, that would probably be a pretty cool frictionless system. I may build that eventually just, just to see if I can, but um, anyway, I'm going to try the simple method first because if I want to get this thing electrified. Oh, the other thing I want to go into is, um, okay, so I got the clutch plate off here. Um, Take a look. Well, look this. <laughs> when I got this bike, um, the screw that was here was um, stripped, and also it wouldn't come out. I had to take a drill and drill it. I was real careful. I managed to drill it out without damaging the threads in the plate. Um, and then I found another screw which fit perfectly, but the head of the screw um, sat down on top of the flower nut. So when I tightened it, it would bend the flower nut, and it actually would cause a wobble in the clutch plate. So what I wound up doing was grinding off the uh, section of the head on this screw and making it kind of narrow 
the head kind of narrow so it would fit inside this these little divots and the dips in the these grooves in the flower nut. Um, that's in case you run into the same problem, you can try that trick. Um, oh, also, I had posted on Facebook I was dealing with a really high pitch whining from this thing, and I wasn't sure where it was coming from. Uh, so I was browsing uh, some YouTube videos, and one guy had noted that uh, these rings or this gear is sometimes not set properly, it's a little wobbly. And when I checked mine, it was right, it was, so I managed to pull this the screw out. I don't know, I don't remember how I got it out. I think I just took a screwdriver or something and just managed to unscrew it. Um, but it does kind of strip easily, so make sure you got a nice wide blade screwdriver or something. Um, so you, you, you grab th as much of this head as possible when you're unscrewing it and screwing it back in. Anyway, I took the screw out and I tapped this level and then put the screw back in. Um, I also took this um, this clutch gear. This I took the clutch plate off and I took out the um, the nut in the middle and, and the lock washer and I took this whole gear out. And there's a bearing just inside the, the, the in the clutch pads. Inside the clutch pads, there's a spinning ring, and inside that ring are some bearings. And I took a, a thin piece of wire and I dipped it in uh, bearing grease, and I just went on all those bearings and just kind of you know just lubricated them up a little bit um, also on some of these bike motors there's an oil uh, or lubrication nipple right there this one doesn't have one but what it does have is a cable stay which is this thing and I took that cable stay out and that gives you access to um, the, the clutch axle which goes through here and I just packed that with I just kept sticking bearing grease in there and kept sticking it in there, sticking in there. Um, until it didn't seem like any more would go in and uh, also I greased up the, the camshaft really well so that way it would you know it would roll smoothly um, and I think that was everything I did to it I put it all back together and the whining I mean this high pitch whining I'd get top speed and it was almost it was so loud it would hurt my ears sometimes especially if you're riding next to a wall that was like almost completely gone. I mean, I hear a little bit of it, but nothing like it used like I used to hear it. So yeah, definitely some some things I recommend doing. If anything, straighten out this gear. Um, and oh yeah, I lubricate it too. Just you know, you stick a dollop of bearing grease here. Um, some people use lithium grease. Just any kind of grease that won't manage to work its way into the clutch pads. Um, I should probably put another dollop of grease there while I'm thinking about it. Uh, Anyway, uh, yeah, the motor's been running great. Uh, most of the issues I've had are with uh, the bicycle itself. Um, people love the way this thing looks. Um, I like the way it rides as a motorized bike. I don't like the way it rides as a bicycle. I wouldn't recommend it as a bicycle. Um, so uh, it is difficult if you got to <laughs> make sure you got some gas or something. If you got to pedal a really long distance on this thing, you're not going to be very happy. Uh, and primarily, I think the main reason for that is because I have the seat so low and my knees are too close to my, you know, my hips when I'm pedaling and I can't get enough bend. I can't straighten my legs out enough when I'm pedaling because it's just the, the distance is too narrow. I could probably raise the seat and solve a lot of that problem and make this thing easier to ride, but that would mean that the handlebars are too low and I'm back to square one with low handlebars. So I'll tolerate the low seat high pedals in order to keep the high handlebars. I guess that's about it. I think that's, that's those are all the real issues I've had to deal with. Um, all the vibration issues I've handled with uh, mostly lock washers. I avoid using Loctite. Um, if I'm not entirely sure I'll need to pull the, the nut or the bolt out again. Uh, but I did use Loctite on the uh, the studs that go into the motor because I really don't plan on changing those out. Um, definitely change the spark plug. Um, modify the muffler. Modify or change the muffler and uh, it will give you some more low end torque and give you a little bit better hill climbing capability. I don't know how much the NT2 um, or the NT Generation 2 carburetor contributes to my power. Um, I noticed some difference in um, the way it performs but 
I'd be tempted to put on the old carburetor just to see what happens. But I, th I think I think one of the advantages that the second generation has is primarily the breather. Um, it looks almost identical. If there's any changes, it would be on the inside of the carburetor. I can't see them. But externally, the only difference is um, um, the air filter. And you can see the air filter is kind of pointed, so air coming, air flows this way, hits the filter, and goes into the manifold. Um, on the other carburetor air filter, just had a little set of pipes that pointed down, up or down to just suck in air as it needed it. Um, so uh, someone had mentioned that uh, the forcing air into the manifold helped performance, so that's probably what they're trying to do on the second generation here. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, also should point out I swapped out the fuel line. The old fuel line, um, the standard fuel line that came with it, uh, was starting to get brittle. It's one of those rubber plastic it's a rubber that turns into plastic when exposed to fuel for too long and it gets really hard and um, I was worried it was going to break so I bought some fuel line and uh, took some clamps and just put a standard fuel line on here and I've had this on here a while and it's still nice and soft and not cracked or nothing so definitely re recommend replacing that uh, it is a little bit hard to get the clamp on here Fortunately, this, there's enough, this line is pliable enough, I was able to take a screwdriver and you know, push down, keep pushing down on the clamp until it finally slid down past the nozzle and I could tighten it up. <laughs> Alright, uh, yeah, so as a, as a bike, I, I enjoy riding it as a motorized bike. I'm, feels really good riding it as a motorized bike. Get a lot of smiles and thumbs up and waves from people. Um, that's always cool. I guess people appreciate motorized bikes and weird attempts to save money on gas. One thing I am, another thing I'm getting used to is using this gas tank. I've had to uh, kind of get used to figuring out how much gas I have in here. When I first started using it, I couldn't really tell. And then I got used to looking in there at an angle and uh, kind of seeing about where the level is because I can never really tell the level of the gas just by looking in there but you got to look at it at an angle and see if you can see the sidewall and it'll give you a pretty good idea where your gas level is um, this gas tank has been pretty good about not um, stalling out you know like if I'm on a hill or on a yeah if I'm on a hill um, gas doesn't doesn't or if I'm if I'm going downhill and gas doesn't pool up in here as much as I thought it might um, so it's usually pretty good about using it to the last drop um, yeah because I've run out of gas and then shake you know sometimes you can shake the tank around to get a little bit more gas in there and it's like yeah I can that doesn't work too well once the same thing out of gas it's out of gas uh, I keep a little uh, little tiny fuel bottle it's about that tall about that big around I keep that in my bike bag full of fuel mix, so if I run out of gas kind of in the middle of quasi-nowhere, I can dump some fuel in the tank and make it to the next gas station, hopefully. Okay, that's it for this video. Of questions or comments, leave them below. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have if I know how. Uh, I did get a question about the clutch. Um, the thing about the clutch I covered... Uh, make sh this, this guy, I forget what his name is, he was, his clutch was, every time he could not adjust it without it slipping, and I'm thinking maybe it has something to do with his, with his rocker arm and his camshaft. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Uh, anyway, always happy to hear from people and chat with people. Take care, have a good day.